Let's talk about my coronation. How's the party planning going? It's gonna be fabulous. And what about the guest list? Everyone's gonna be there. I don't want everyone to be there. This needs to be exclusive. Right, right. Well, not everyone, but all the VIPs. Okay, sounds good. Now, the most important question. What am I going to wear? The Emperor's new clothes. Wiggle, Wiggle snap, snap, story time. Once upon a time, there was an emperor. An emperor is basically the same as a king or a queen. A ruler, a head honcho, big kahuna, bad mamma jamma, the boss lady, you get the point. Anyway, this emperor's name was Matilda. Matilda was, how do I say, a bit much. What can I say? I like the finer things in life. Emperor Matilda spent a lot of her time thinking about stuff. Jewels, clothes, money. Sometimes she would open her palace to the public so that people could come in and admire all her things. Wow! Looky that! In case you were wondering, yes, it's real gold. Do you like that? Yes, your highness. Would you like to have it? Oh, yes, your highness, I would very much like that. Cool, just checking. All right, let's move it along. There's a long line here today. Yes, Emperor Matilda was a little out of touch with the people. All her life, everyone around her had just said, yes, your highness, of course, your highness, what a pretty dress, your highness. No one deserves it more than you, your highness. You are the most wonderful person in the whole wide world in the history of humankind, your highness. And wow, we, could anyone be more perfect than you, your highness? I don't think so. No siree, Bob. No way, Jose. No contest. You kidding me? Come on, the best, the best. Yeah, it was all a bit much. The emperor was surrounded by people who only dared to say what they thought she wanted to hear. So it was kind of like she was living in a bubble, like she was all by herself in her own world. So yeah, technically she pays us to hang out with her. And we have to call her your highness, but we like her. Yeah, she's only scary sometimes. Not scary like a shark or a big ogre. Ugh, where's my ice cream? Scary like that. Did you get Emperor Matilda her ice cream? I thought you were getting it. Excuse me. Hello. <gasps> ice cream, ice cream, ice cream for ice cream. Minnie, where's my ice cream? Sorry, your highness. I'll get it. No, I'll get it. I don't want to stay here if she's hangry. Be a dear and go get my ice cream. Yes, your highness, two scoops coming up. Two? Three, three scoops coming up. <laughs> it's melted. I'm not even that hungry anyway. Let's talk about my coronation. You might be wondering, what's a coronation? Well, a coronation is a royal ceremony where a queen or emperor gets her official I'm in charge crown. I don't get it. Don't you already have like a zillion crowns? Yes, but this makes it official. I'll finally be the supreme number one ruler of the empire. <gasps> and it's an excuse for a big party. <gasps> Speaking of, how's the party planning going? It's gonna be fabulous. Give me the deets. We're going to have acrobats, a Ferris wheel, fireworks, ice sculptures, a taco truck, chocolate waterfall, a special performance by Shen Yun dancers, the works. And what about the guest list? Everyone's gonna be there. I don't want everyone to be there. This needs to be exclusive. Right, right, well not everyone, but all the VIPs. Yep, all the princes and princesses, kings and queens, the movers and the shakers, the beautiful people, the glitterati. Okay, sounds good. Now, the most important question. What am I going to wear? I was thinking your pink dress with the ruffles and beads. No. What about your other pink dress with ruffles and beads, but also has those diamond buttons? Hmm, nuh -uh. Purple one with puffy sleeves and hoop skirt? Nah. Your blue gown with rainbow glitter and rhinestones? Eh, I don't think so. Your red, white, and blue pantsuit? No. Nope. Yellow dress with fairy wings and little sparkly spangly bits hanging off of it? No, 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 no. I need a new outfit. Shall I book a carriage to the mall? Uh, I am not going to wear something off the rack for my coronation for Friday. Ooh, how about we invite the world's leading fashion designers to the palace, and then we pick the one with the best design? 
Yes, and then I will pick which one has the best design. <laughs> Great idea, glad I thought of it. Yes, wonderful idea, your highness. This is going to be so much fun. Bring on the fashion. This is going to be the best outfit ever. The best clothes anyone has ever seen. And so it was decided the world's best fashion designers would descend on the palace to vie for a chance to make the emperor's new clothes. The emperor needed the perfect new outfit for her coronation, so Friday and Jeeves called on the world's top fashion designers. They came from all over for a chance to make Emperor Matilda's coronation duds. One by one, they tried to convince the emperor to give them a chance. Presenting Nutella vs. Blotchy. Hello, I am Nutella vs. Blotchy, but you already knew that, didn't you, darlings? Yes, well, she literally just said your names. Oh, okay. Are you ready to have your mind blown? Yes. This year is going to be all about... Yeah? Wait for it. I'm waiting. Tiny hats! <laughs> Next. And now, meet Calvin Clown. Your Highness, I had a vision last night. I know exactly what you need to wear to your coronation. Ooh, tell me. Clown chic. <laughs> And here's Diane von Furstenberg. Hello, let me show you my designs made with exclusively the finest fox fur. Next. One by one, wacky designers came in to sell their ideas to Emperor Matilda. She was waiting to be wowed, dazzled, blown away, but so far she was not impressed. Oh, how hard is it to find someone who can make the most amazingly perfect and fabulous outfit the likes of which no one has ever seen, you know? Is she mad at us? I think she's mad at us. Do you think she's mad at us? Oh, I hope she's not mad at us. Uh, this is hopeless. Um, I think there might be one more designer out there. Zora, let's go check. Hi, um, do you want to be a fashion designer by any chance? What? A fashion designer. Ugh, never mind. Did somebody say fashion designer? We're not done. There's still hope. We've got... Wait, what are your names? I'm Z. Does that stand for something? It stands for everything and nothing. Okay, and your name? Dieter. Okay, your highness. May I present Z and Dieter? Hi. What's up? Um, people usually bow when they meet the emperor. Oh, do they? My bad. It's okay, Jeeves. They're cool, hip, artsy types. They're aloof. I can dig it. I'm cool. That's good to hear because our idea for your new look is very, very cool. I want something no one has ever seen before. Exactly. So, can I see a sketch or something? One moment. Do you trust us? I just met you. We can't show you our idea unless we know you trust our artistic vision. Okay. If not, we'll go design an outfit for Princess Megan. She gets us. Uh, no way. Uh, what do you need from me? One million gold coins. Yeesh, that's a lot. You guys must be good. Let me think for a sec. Okay, I'm in. Excellent. Dieter, unveil the design. Fashion designers Z and Dieter were just about to unveil their design for Emperor Matilda's coronation outfit. Can I get Z drumroll, please? Yeah, we're really good at that. Come on already. Show me, show me, show me, show me. What do you think? Um, I don't get it. It's just a piece of paper that says, yes, girl. Because that's what everyone is going to say when they see you. Yes, yes girl. girl. But I want to see the outfit. You have to see the real thing. No drawing would do it justice. Let us get to work and we promise it will be worth the wait. Pinky promise? Sure. One, two, three, pinky promise. 
Emperor Matilda gave the fashion designers their own suite in the palace so they could get to work. Now kids, let's take a trip to another part of the world where someone else was also getting ready for a big coronation party. Meet Prince Gerald. Prince Gerald was, well, remember when we said Emperor Matilda was a bit much? Well, if she's a bit much, then Prince Gerald was a lot. Ew, you don't expect me to wear these rags to the coronation party, do you? Your Highness, this is a suit made of the finest silk in the world. Well, it smells like worm spit. Okay, how about this velvet cape? A cape? Do I look like a superhero, Chauncey? No, definitely not, sir. I mean, I know I'm big and strong and can probably scale a wall like Spider-Man, but come on. Spider-Man doesn't wear a cape. Okay, Mr. Know-It-All. Your brother is going to wear a simple suit of linen. He'll be quite comfortable. Would you like the tailors to make two? Ew, and look like we're twins? I am not twinning with Joshua. You don't want to twin with me, Gerald? Why not? Because you're my lowly younger brother who will never be king and is therefore a nothing person. Ouch. All right. And I'll never catch Emperor Matilda's eye if I'm dressed like you. It's the goal of His Highness Prince Gerald to woo Matilda and marry her. Thereby forming a mighty global dominion, the likes of which have never been seen. Oh. Well, it's nice to have goals. Chauncey, get Joshy out of here. He's killing my vibe. I'll show myself out. So yeah, Prince Gerald was planning on marrying Emperor Matilda. Of course, he was not the only person vying for a chance to wed the powerful Matilda. There was Lord Blaine of Yorkshire Town, Count von Winklevoss of Dumberton, Sir Billy Bob of Arkansas Shire, and of course, one can't forget Baron von Earl Duke, Sir of London Townville Place City. Everyone wanted the prestige and power that would come with marrying Emperor Matilda, and the coronation ball would give them all a chance to win her heart. Emperor Matilda knew all eyes would be on her. She tried to imagine the perfect coronation outfit. What would Z and Dieter create? She could not wait to see. <gasps> Something with sparkle? Maybe a dress completely covered with diamonds? Would you like to dance? Sure! <sighs> Sorry, I can't move this dress, it's too heavy. It's real diamond. <laughs> nah, too heavy. Hmm. Oh, what about an outfit with stilts so I could look like an elegant giraffe? <laughs> okay, no, that's no good. Ooh, I know. What could be better than a dress made of butterflies? Like actual real life butterflies. No one's ever done that. Whoa, 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 help! My dress is flying away. Meanwhile, Z and Dieter were hard at work in their palace suite. Or at least that's how it sounded. But on the other side of the door, not so much. Hmm, what were they up to? Weren't they supposed to be hard at work? After day, Emperor Matilda waited to see the big reveal of Z and Dieter's design of her extra special coronation outfit. Is it ready yet? No, not yet. I don't know. Not quite yet. Oh. Now? No. Yeah, but how about now? No. No. Emperor Matilda was growing more and more impatient. Why don't you just give them a deadline and say if it's not done by then, they're out, fired, scrammed. Yeah, you're the emperor. They have to do what you say. Yeah, I am the emperor. Jeeves, go tell them my coronation outfit had better be ready by Thursday or else. Or else what? I don't know. Just make sure you sound scary and intimidating when you say it. Yes, ma'am. Or else. Or else. Or else. Ahem. Emperor Matilda has decreed. Um, that means decided. Um, yes? Yeah. You have to have the outfit ready by Thursday. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot. Or else. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Bye. Okay, back to business. Hello, fight. It seemed like Z and Dieter were just goofing off and wasting time. And then, all of a sudden, it was Thursday. Emperor Matilda woke up very, very, very excited. <gasps> oh, today is the day that I see the most fabulous, most beautiful, most perfect outfit in the world. Z and Dieter, on the other hand, woke up like this. 
Oh no, Z, wake up! It is Thursday! Shh, I'm sleeping! You must wake up! Today is the day! The Emperor Matilda is coming to Caesar's design! <gasps> no, we're not ready! Yes, today! Get up, zinc! Uh. Zinc, zinc! I am thinking, you think! Ah! Hello! Quick, hide! Wait, close your eyes! Oh, uh, bet I'm in for a big surprise here. <laughs> Where is it? Ooh, is this it? It feels weird. No, that's not it. Here. Ooh, I can't wait to try it on. This? You want me to wear this to the coronation? But this just looks like big frilly underoos. No, you wear that under the dress, obviously. Okay, so where's the real dress? You had a deadline, guys. Remember, or else. We know, and we used every available moment to work on this most perfect outfit. Great, so show me. Right, show you. Uh, Dieta, she wants us to show her. Here, this is it. But wait, before you say anything, let me explain to you how special this ensemble is. This, this is a magical dress. This dress can only be seen by people who deserve to see it. You know how everyone is always trying to impress you and be all buddy-buddy with you? Yeah, I'm the emperor. I'm basically the most important person in the world. Exactly, and you can't waste your time with Riff Raff. Anyone who can't see the dress is obviously not worth your time. Only the best people are able to see it. So tell us, what do you think? Do you love it? Well, obviously I think it's gorgeous. Emperor Matilda tried on her new dress. Well, I love it. But deep down, she was super confused. Why couldn't she see it? So. Tell me again who can and cannot see my fabulous, gorgeous magic dress. It's simple. Anyone who doesn't deserve to see it won't see it. But what do you mean deserve? Can you give me some examples of who would not deserve to see it? Basically anyone who is not worth your time. Enemies, frenemies, villains, ne'er-do-wells. Rapscallions, ragamuffins, Joe Schmoes, the boring, the uncool, the not awesome, etc. What about a romantic suitor who woos me and asks for my hand in marriage? If the person truly loves you, they will be able to see it. Uh, what about Princess Megan, who, like, says she's my friend, but she always does non-friend stuff? Like, she doesn't always share her snacks with me. False friends will not be able to see it. You'll finally be able to know who's fake and who's real in your life. Yeah, no haters allowed. Wow. <laughs> but wait a minute. <laughs> Who would not like me? Because I'm the best, you know? Of course you're the best, Emperor. No one here is questioning that. Can you two see the dress? Um, uh, yeah, of course. Toy, we love it. Have we not said we love it? Because we totally love it. And we can see it. Yep. Good. Well, I'm pretty exhausted from all this, so I think I'll take it up. Dismissed. Once Emperor Matilda was left alone, she took another look in the mirror. She looked up and down and all around. She put on glasses. She squinted. She tried using a magnifying glass. She took a selfie. Nothing worked. She could not see the dress. G what does this mean? Is something wrong with me? Am I uncool? Am I not as awesome as I think I am? Uh Emperor Matilda decided she had better test this further. She went around the castle asking people what they thought of her outfit. She had to see if others could see what she herself could not. Excuse me, Mr. Butler, do you like my outfit? Um, yes, yes, of course, madam. Is it a pretty dress? Uh, most certainly, your highness. Okay. You, chef, what do you think of my new look? Why, it's very... Interesting. Well done, your highness. What do you like most about it? Gee, everything about it is beautiful. I really couldn't choose. <sighs> Gardener lady, halt! Yes, your highness? Do you like my dress? Your dress? Uh, yes. <laughs> my dress? You can see it, can't you? <laughs> um, yes? 
Why do you say it like a question? Can you not see it? Is this a trick question? I think she's losing her marbles. Just tell her she looks pretty and move along. You look very pretty in your new dress, Highness. Ah! Everyone claimed they could see the dress. Emperor Matilda did not know what to think. Was it possible that everyone could see it except her? Meanwhile, Friday and Jeeves were also discussing the Emperor's new clothes. So, the dress? The dress. Can you see it? Can you? I asked you first. Let's answer at the same time. Count of three. One, two, three. I, I cannot, cannot see, the, see dress. the dress. Yikes. Yikes is right. Friday and Jeeves went looking for Z and Dieter to find out what was really going on. But the eccentric fashion designers were nowhere to be found. Where are they? Looks like they left in a hurry. How do you know? There's only one bite taken out of this donut. No one takes just one bite of donut. Good point. But why run away so hastily? They must have something to hide. Friday and Jeeves were growing suspicious that the fashion designer Z and Dieter had pulled a trick on Emperor Matilda. Their so-called magic dress might be a big fat lie, and now it looked like they had run away. Very shady. Meanwhile, Emperor Matilda was so confused, but she knew one thing for certain. She couldn't let anyone else know that she could not see the dress. So it was business as usual, and the preparation for the coronation celebration were underway. Okay, the party is in less than 24 hours. Decorations are all set? Yes, your majesty. Ooh, is it too late to coordinate the streamers and balloons to match my dress? Uh, sure. Good idea, your highness. How are we going to do that? Rainbow everything? Ah, good plan. Hello, over here. What about the guest list? Has everyone RSVP? Yes, your majesty. Basically, the whole world will be here. It's gonna be a banger. And how about the DJ? I don't want a repeat of my last royal party. What is this? I cannot dance to this. We got DJ Razzle Dazzle. She's the best in the biz. Okay, good. What about the rest of my look? Your glamour consultant will be here any minute to talk hairstyle, makeup, shoes, and jewelry. Well, I guess I'd better get into my dress then. <laughs> right. Okay, see ya. We have to find Z and Dieter and get to the bottom of this. You kept the donut? It's valuable evidence. Plus, it's strawberry frosted. Can't let a good donut go to waste. Now, where is that dress? Emperor Matilda realized she had a problem. If I can't see the dress, then how am I supposed to find it? Ugh. Oh, here, dressy, 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 here, dressy, where are you? Ah, it's no use, I'll never find it. Excuse me, your highness. Ah, oh, you startled me. My apologies, Highness. I'm your glamour guy, Gary. Nice to meet you. Now, are you ready to get glam? Yes, of course. Okay, first things first. Where's that amazing dress I keep hearing about? Um, over there. Where? Over there. Um, I'm sorry, but where exactly? <laughs> Look, if you can't find it on your own, then maybe you shouldn't be here. But, Your Highness, no buts. Haven't you heard that my dress is magical? Magic? Like it gives you superpowers? <gasps> Can you fly? No, but that would be cool. <laughs> the magic is that the dress can only be seen by those who deserve to see it. Oh, oh. Right, so if you're telling me you can't see it, glamour guy Gary, then clearly you shouldn't be here in the presence of a super awesome emperor like me. <laughs> of course, your highness, I understand. Wait, oh, there it is. Oh my, and it is gorgeous. Hmm, describe it to me. Uh, sure, well, it's long um, and poofy, shiny, but not too shiny. And the color? The color is so you, your highness. 
Words cannot express how beautiful this dress is. I simply can't say another word. Excellent. Let's get glam. Friday and Jeeves were on the hunt for the missing fashion designers, but Z and Dieter were not on the run. They had simply gone to their next fashion job. And you'll make me the best, most handsome suit ever? We'll design a suit for you, the likes of which no one has ever seen. You're going to like the way you look. We guarantee it. I like the sound of that. Now get to work. Yes, sir. Yes, word had gotten round that Emperor Matilda had hired Dieter and Z. So everyone who was anyone hired the two fashion designers to make their own coronation ensembles. And they were raking in the gold. V are rich. Let's buy a yacht. Ooh, and a miniature horse farm. I've always wanted a tiny horsey. I must say, dear Tur, this was our finest idea yet. The invisible dress. We do nothing and get all the money. I knew it. You were lying. You're still eating that donut? Ooh, I'm savoring it. The big day. The Emperor's coronation party. All across the land, partygoers were getting ready for the celebration. Fashion designers Z and Dieter had gotten quite a few jobs making clothes for the many of the Emperor's guests. Each was told the same thing. This outfit is magic. Only the very best people can see it. Hey, brother. <laughs> Looking good. I know. Those undies really bring out your eyes. What are you talking about? Your underwear? Oh, of course you can't see it. See what? My real clothes? They're magic. Only the very best people can see them. Uh-huh. Go on. So, since you're my annoying little brother who is but a lowly prince and will never be king, it makes sense you wouldn't be able to see my awesome outfit. Right. And you're definitely not just wearing underwear. Ugh, I should have known you wouldn't understand. And you're going to try to win Emperor Matilda's heart wearing your magic suit that's definitely not just underwear? She'll be able to see my real clothes, and believe me, she'll be impressed. Whatever you say, Gerald. Meanwhile, back at the palace, Friday and Jeeves had decided they had to tell the Emperor the truth. She was their friend. And friends don't let friends go to a party wearing big, silly bloomers. What if she doesn't believe us and thinks we just can't see the dress? She'll believe us. She's our friend. Okay, if you say so. Oh. My. Gosh. I look amazing. These shoes. Fabulous. <laughs> These jewels. Gorge. My makeup. Flawless. My hair. Fierce. Work it, girl. Now, time to put on my dress. Can you bring it to me? Glamour Gary stopped snapping. He could not fetch her dress. He couldn't see it. Gary had to think fast. I would, but I uh, have to go to the bathroom. It will just take a second. Just hand me the dress. <laughs> oh, can't. Gotta go. Must be the burrito I ate for breakfast. Friday! Jeeves! I need help! I need help putting on my dress. Your Highness, we need to tell you something. I don't really have time for stories. The coronation starts in an hour. I need my dress. About that. There is no dress. Excuse me? The dress isn't magic. It doesn't exist. The fashion designers tricked you. No, you're just saying that because you can't see the dress. Because you aren't worthy of seeing it. But... No, no but. Now get out, and don't even think about coming to the party. You're uninvited. The party is for friends only. <laughs> Ouch, that was not a nice thing to say. And send in a maid to help me with my dress. Yes, your majesty. When Friday and Jeeves left, Emperor Matilda started to cry. She wasn't sure why. She usually only cried when she wanted something and couldn't have it. So why was she crying now? Was she upset because she herself could not see the dress and this confused her? Was she sad that she had spoken to her friends in such a mean way? The coronation party had begun and it was finally time for Emperor Matilda to make her big entrance. She now felt confident the magic dress was real and that Friday and Jeeves were wrong. And now presenting the one, the only, Emperor Matilda. <laughs> See, 
These are my real people. They all love me. They can see the dress. Just then, Emperor Matilda caught sight of Prince Gerald. Huh? He's in his underwear. Hello, your highness. May I be the first to say you look beautiful? You're not the first to say that. A lot of people have said that. Right, right, of course. Well, looks like we've both got good taste. What do you mean? We use the same fashion designers. Your dress looks amazing, by the way. Do you like my suit? Uh, yeah. It's great. I gotta go. Okay, bye. What was that about? Is he crazy? He's in his underwear. What are all these people doing in their underwear? Your dress is awesome. Do you like mine? I used Z and Dieter. They're fabulous. <gasps> what is going on? Wait, it can't be. What, what if I'm not worthy to see their clothes? No, I'm the emperor. I'm the most important person in the whole world. Or were Freddy and Jeeves right? Is this a scam? Am I, <gasps> am I in my underwear? <sighs> Excuse me, I need a moment. The good thing about being emperor is that you get a nice cushy throne to sit on, far, far away from everyone else. That comes in handy when you need a minute to think. Okay, let me just sit here and think. I have to figure out what's going on. But she was soon interrupted. Emperor, it is time to accept gifts from neighboring kingdoms. Oh, good, my favorite part. <laughs> People line up and tell me how wonderful I am and they give me presents. This will be a nice distraction from the whole underwear thing. <laughs> Presenting Lord Blaine of Yorkshire Town. Your Majesty, please accept my gift, a giant chocolate crown. Thank you, Lord Blaine. Uh, looks tasty, but may I inquire about your outfit? It's a Z and Dieter design, just like yours. Right. And now, Count Von Winklevoss of Dumbarton. Madam, please accept this pony and this compliment. Your dress is absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Next, your majesty, is Sir Billy Bob of Arkansas-shire. Your highness, please accept this novelty thimble set. Is that gold? Yes, your majesty, but its beauty pales in comparison to you. Your dress sure is nice. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks. Next. Yes, ma'am. This is Baron Von Earl, Duke Sir of London Townville Place City. And you guessed it. Also rocking his undies. Emperor, I wish to give you these diamond earrings. Thank you. I love diamonds. They're expensive. Yes, and might I add, they would look beautiful with your dress. Hmm, my dress. You can see my dress? You're telling me you can see this dress, is that correct? Yes, of course. Just as I'm sure you can see my suit. Z and Dieter designed it. Emperor Matilda was so confused. She couldn't see any suits. All she could see was a bunch of silly underwear. What was going on? Was the entire world playing a big trick on her? And now, presenting Prince Gerald and Prince Joshua of Cape Dumbledore. Hello again, Matilda. Please accept this ring as a token of my undying affection. Oh, looks like I have room on my pinky. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, that's a really nice suit. Thank you. I was talking to him. Him? Yeah, I like it. Excuse me, your majesty. It's time to do the crown thingy. Your dad's here. Presenting Emperor Ignatius. It is with great honor that I... Emperor Ignatius. Emperor Ignatius, that's me. Let me start over. It is with great honor that I, Emperor Ignatius, present my daughter... Matilda. I know that. It is my great honor to present my daughter, Matilda, with the official very big crown of the Empire. I am too old for this job, so she's the boss now. Got it? <laughs> what in tarnation? Why is everybody in their underwear? It's the new trend. They're all wearing magic clothes. Surely you can see their real clothing. All I see is a bunch of goofy people dancing around in their underwear. What? <gasps> Freddy and Jeeves are right. I'm not wearing a magic dress at all. I'm just wearing these silly bloomers. 
Emperor Matilda was so embarrassed. All this time she had been bragging about her magical clothes and now she knew for sure there were no magical clothes. Excuse me, your highness. Go away. I've been humiliated at my own party. This was supposed to be a special day. My day. Okay, well, I brought you a piece of cake. I thought that might cheer you up. Uh, it might. Some people might say thank you. Mm, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Sure you don't want any company? Fine. I mean, thank you. Great party. <laughs> it was supposed to be a great party, and it got ruined by my dumb, not magic dress. What am I even saying? There is no dress. It was all made up to make me look silly in front of everyone. Well, you're not the only one. My brother Gerald was prancing around in his undies, too. And all those other guys. But I'm the Emperor. People are supposed to respect me. And this dress was supposed to show me who my real friends were. And if they can't see the dress, then they don't deserve to be my friend. Maybe it's the opposite. Your real friends should tell you the truth. Oh. Well, no. You're right. Friday and Jeeves tried to tell me. And I was so mean to them. Ugh, I've messed everything up. I am the worst. <laughs> I don't think you're the worst. My brother Gerald is definitely more annoying than you. Gee, thanks. Let's go back to the party. This is your night. You should have some fun. I can't. I look silly. Do you want my jacket? No. No? <laughs> Wowzers. <laughs> now let's go. Wait, first I have to do something. Come with me. Emperor Matilda and Prince Joshua ran through the palace. Friday, Jeeves! Friday, Jeeves! But it was no use. Friday and Jeeves were nowhere to be found. Oh, God, I must have hurt their feelings so much that they left the palace forever! But Friday and Jeeves were not gone at all. In fact, they were at the coronation party. You probably didn't notice before, but they were there the whole time. See, they were in disguise. And not because they didn't want to miss the party, they were on a mission. We have to find Z and Dieter. Yeah, they don't get to trick our friend and get away with it. They've got to be here somewhere. Conga. Conga! But then they got swept up in a conga line. There they are. Let's get them. I can't. The conga line is too powerful. We've been overtaken by the dance. Hello. Come on, this is our chance. How low can you go? How low can you go? Woo! Wait, where'd they go? We lost them. Did we lose them? Yeah, like a little koala and a fox are gonna bring us down. Yeah, that would be crazy, right? Yeah, wait. Gotcha. Time to pay the piper, you charlatans. Uh-oh. Come with us. We're taking you to the Emperor. What for? What for? For tricking our friend into wearing some silly bloomers to her coronation party. And for taking her gold. We told you, the dress is magic. If you can't see it, that's not our fault. Oh yeah? Jeeves, you take Dieter. I've got Z. Okay, Smarty McSmartPants. What color is the dress? Blue and pink. Orange and purple. Describe it. It is long with puffy sleeves and ruffles. It's short, covered in sparkles, and has a long train in the back. A choo-choo? You expect me to believe there's a choo-choo train attached to her dress? A train is a long piece of fabric on the back of a dress. Oh, I knew that. What else? Did I already say it's blue and pink? All right, I've heard enough. Let us compare notes. Aha! We knew it! You both described totally different dresses. Your fibbers. Come with us. We are bringing you to Emperor Matilda so she can punish you. <sighs> it's no use. They're gone. I don't blame them. I was pretty mean. <laughs> What's everybody yelling for? Let's go find out. You tricked us! Yeah, do you realize how silly I look? I can't believe I'm wearing underwear! Friday! Jeeves! You're here! I know you said we weren't allowed at the party, but we have something to tell you. It's important. Please don't be mad. Uh, mad? 
I'm not mad, I'm so happy to see you. I owe you a huge apology. You were right, the magic dress was a big ol' sham, a scam, a flim flam. Wait, you know? Yeah, I finally figured it out. That's right, everybody, I'm in my underwear. So what? So is this guy, and that guy over there, and her, and him. Who cares, this is my party, and I'll wear what I want. <laughs> and furthermore, I hereby decree that every year on this Date, we will celebrate with a bloomers only party! What do you want to do about these guys? Throw them in a dungeon? Make them eat worms? Put ketchup in their hair? Um, interesting ideas, but no. The only punishment that they will have is that they have to return the money that they took from us. What? No! I was going to buy a pony. Sorry, you're gonna give the money back and it will be donated to the good people of this empire. <laughs> Ice cream for everyone! Yeah! Mom, Mom Matilda! Oh, and you have to clean up after the party and it's gonna be a rager, so it'll be a big, big mess. Oh. But I'm wearing couture! Uh, well, sorry, you should have thought of that before you scammed half the world and tricked us into wearing our undies. Even if we learned a lesson or two. Yeah. Like, maybe I shouldn't be such a show-off all the time, and maybe I should be grateful for my real friends. That's you guys. Oh, that reminds me. I have to hereby officially decree something. I hereby decree that Friday and Jeeves are now Knights of the Empire. Really? Yep. You've been my friends for pretty much for forever, <laughs> and it's about time you'd be recognized for that. So. Please, Neil. Does anybody have a sword? Ah, why do you need a sword? It's symbolic, don't worry. You knelt mere servants. Now rise up as Knights of the Empire. Now let's boogie! I'm so inspired by your wisdom and kindness, Emperor Matilda. May I have this dance? Oh, I'm sorry, my dance card is full. Come on, Prince Joshua, let's get down to Groove Town. It had a rough start, but the coronation party proved to be a success. Emperor Matilda finally learned what it meant to be a friend, someone who will tell you the truth, someone who will be there when you need them and who has patience with you when you're maybe not so kind, someone who will bring you chocolate cake when you're feeling sad to make you feel better. To good friends! To good friends! Oh, and everyone had a blast dancing around in their silly underwear. The end! Ah, I'm so glad there was a happy ending. To friendship. To friendship. See you all next time, friends. For now, subscribe to Cool School and follow the whole Cool School gang on Instagram and Facebook. Bye! Bye. See ya! Hi, kids! Welcome to Storytime with me, Miss Booksy. What story should we read today? Hmm, let's spin the magic wheel. Alice in Wonderland. Wiggle, snap, story time. Let's go. Hi, I'm Alice. So I was here trying my best not to be so bored when I noticed a little white rabbit. This was no ordinary rabbit. He was wearing a suit and glasses. Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late, oh dear. Well, this was just too curious. I must follow the white rabbit. He slipped into a rabbit hole. So I did too. Whoa, but this was no ordinary rabbit hole. Ah, wait, I'm not really falling. I'm more like floating, like a feather. Story time, story time. Miss Booksy's gonna meet you inside. Her magic books, Cinderella dress in blue. Goldilocks and spinning clock. Wiggle snap, wiggle snap, everybody. Wiggle snap, wiggle snap, wiggle snap, everybody. Wiggle snap. Cool. Wait, where am I? Whoa! Did I fall all the way through the earth? Hmm, a small key. 
But this key is way too small for any of these doors. Well, what do you know? There's a teensy door. Wow, too bad this door's so small. I don't even think I could get my head through. And if I could, what good would my head be without the rest of me? <sighs> hey, that wasn't there before. It says, drink me. Hmm, I know I'm not supposed to just drink things willy-nilly. What if it's poison? Or what if it's something just weird, like cauliflower juice? <laughs> hmm, it says here, definitely not poison and most certainly not cauliflower juice. Well, that's odd. Okay, I'll try just a sip. Mmm, delicious. It tastes like everything I like. Cherry pie, ice cream, pineapples, roast turkey, French toast, mmm, pancakes. Oh, hey, hey, what's happening? Uh oh, oh, I wonder if I shouldn't have tried that juice. Well, this is totally weird. But hey, now I can go into that garden. Oh no, the key is all the way up there at the table. That's as high as the Empire State Building now. Whoa, oh, there's a giant cookie. Well, if the drink made me smaller, maybe the cookie will make me bigger. Food does make you grow. <laughs> okay, here goes nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Oh, oh, wait, I think. Whoa! Well, this is not what I had in mind. Now I'm so big that I'm stuck. Oh dear, I'm incredibly late. The queen simply will not tolerate this. Oh dear. Please, Mr. Rabbit, I'm stuck. I can't help you now. Didn't you hear me? I'm terribly late. But, but what if I'm stuck up here forever? It's really hot in here and I don't like being a giant. <laughs> Stop crying. You'll get all wet and ruin this new suit. I'm sorry, but this is just really uncomfortable. Ah, well, I'm leaving. Well, that's better at least. Wait, wait a second. I'm shrinking! Woohoo! <laughs> oh, oh no. Well, this isn't good. Luckily, I'm a very good swimmer. <laughs> I took lessons at camp. <laughs> oh, look! There's a friendly looking mouse! Yoohoo! Mousy! <laughs> Mr. Mouse, do you know how to get to the beautiful garden with the Ferris wheel and the merry go round? Come on, follow me! Okay! <laughs> Soon we were joined by all sorts of small animals. A gang of baby ducks, Aww. a salamander, two frogs, and a hamster named Philip. <laughs> we swam and swam and swam, going right under the door and into the garden. When we finally got to dry land, I thought we would go play, or at least find a snack. <laughs> but the animals said they had to have an election, but they couldn't decide what they were voting on, and it got quite noisy. Oh look, there's the white rabbit. He was the one who led me down the rabbit hole, so he must know the way out. I chased after him, but I was too small for him to notice me. Oh, if only there was some more growing potion. <laughs> Just like magic, there was a little bottle right in my path and it had a label on it that said, drink me, Alice. Wow. So I took a sip. And I grew! <laughs> what a relief! Oh, I'm me again! Not a great big giant and not a teeny tiny mouse. Oh, speaking of a tiny mouse, all of the small animals saw me suddenly grow larger and boy did that scare them. They all scattered away, shrieking. Girlzilla! She's a giant! Sorry. Where's that darn rabbit this time? I'm looking for a rabbit. I found myself face to face with a giant caterpillar. Wait, did I shrink again? You don't look shrunken to me. But why are you so large? And how did you learn to talk? Well, that's a silly question. Are you silly? I don't think so. Well then, let's hear a poem. Excuse me? I'd like to hear a 
poem. One that rhymes, please. Um, okay, well, I never heard of a caterpillar who likes poetry, but here goes. <clears throat> this one is called The Queen of Hearts. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The knave of hearts, he stole those tarts Aww. and took them clean away. The king of hearts called for the tarts and beat the knave full sore. The knave of hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. <laughs> How dare you accuse the knave of stealing the queen's tarts? Don't you know the queen will say off with his head? It's only a made-up poem. The queen of hearts isn't real. Shh. Of course the queen is real. And if she hears you say she isn't, She'll say, off with your head. Oh no, but I like my head. It helps me think things, and see things, and smell things. And it has my hair on it. I really like my hair. <laughs> You're a traitor to the queen. Oh, this is a terrible misunderstanding. I, I, I wish I could shrink down so super tiny that I could just escape. Here, eat this. I gobbled up the cookie that he gave me and I grew taller, and taller, and taller, and I was very gigantic. Hey, I want to be small so I could just hide from the queen. You made me even bigger. So you're very easy to spot. Oh, you caterpillar, I ought to step on you. That would be a crime, and the queen would say. Off with her head, yeah, yeah, I heard you the first time. Oh, where's that rabbit? Oh, look. There's some nice looking fellows that should be able to help me. They're sleeping. Shh. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, wait a second. You're just pretending. We were hoping you would leave us alone. Well, that's rude. Says the girl who interrupted our tea party. Your hair is too long. You should get a haircut. Why, you're rude too. Besides, I like my hair. And that rude little mouse is still pretending to be asleep, even though we've met before. I thought we were friends. Oh no, he really is asleep. Poor little guy's exhausted. Oh dear, now I am the rude one. No worries, have some tea. I guess he's a sleep talker. <laughs> the other two introduced themselves as the March Hare and the Mad Hatter. The March Hare was an odd creature indeed. He would butter a piece of toast and take one bite and say, yuck, too much butter, and then on to the next piece of toast. Same thing, over and over again. And the Mad Hatter? He was even otter. An otter? Where? Not that kind of otter. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Good. Otters are utterly annoying. Why do you keep dipping your watch into your tea? Well, it all goes back to the time I killed time. And then the Mad Hatter told me the most ridiculous story. He had to sing for the queen. He says he sang an old classic, Twinkle Twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder where you're at. I told him he had the words all wrong, but he insisted he was right, and I was ruining his story. On he went. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. Anyway, you get the idea. While well, the queen jumped up and said he was killing the time, and then she yelled, Off with his head! The Mad Hatter managed to escape, head and all. But ever since, time has been paused, stopped, finished, el finito. Yes, my watch stopped at four o'clock, and we've just been here ever since. It's always tea time. I love tea time, but I do wish dinner time would come. At least you don't ever have bedtime. Bedtime is the worst. <laughs> oh, but I do love bedtime stories. <laughs> Those are so cool. I like stories about princesses and dragons and pirates. Oh, and stories about tigers and, and robots and, and romance. Oh, I love a romance. <laughs> and adventure and ninjas and oh, fairies and, and pixies. And oh, of course, a story about a handsome prince. Enough. We don't have time for you to list every kind of story ever told. Rude. Besides, I thought you had a lot of time. Weren't you listening? We have no time. That's very confusing. All I know is that you are a very rude bunny. 
and you are a very rude hatter, whatever that is. And you, Mr. Mouse, I thought you were supposed to be nice. I am, dear. Quite nice. Lovely to see you. Well, lovely to see you too. As for the rest of you, I'm going. Perfect. Goodbye. No, bad bye. It's the garden I've been looking for. Woohoo! I should go to the Ferris wheel and get cotton candy. What's that noise? I better hide. Wow, the queen is actually a queen of hearts from a deck of playing cards. I wonder if she likes to play Go Fish. What's that? It smells like a rotten child. Hey, I'm not rotten. I'm really nice. Ask anybody, except the Mad Hatter or the March Hare. They don't think I'm really nice. Off with her head. No way. No, you're not offing with my head. I came here to do two things, ride the Ferris wheel and eat cotton candy. So kindly, your highness, tell me where the Ferris wheel is. She is just a child, dear. Maybe you shouldn't off with her head. Oh. Well, can you at least play croquet? I sure can. Oh boy, do I wish I hadn't said that. The queen's croquet game was totally bananas. The card soldiers had to bend over backwards and frontwards to make the archers hit the ball through. Except the croquet balls were live hedgehogs and no one had any regular mallets. Instead, they used real live pink flamingos. It was the weirdest game ever. But I was too scared not to play or else she might say, off with Alice's head. Hmm. I'm really sorry, you guys. I promise to be very gentle. Aww. Thank you. No problem, Alice. Alice began to walk through the garden looking for an apple or a cookie like the ones she'd eaten before. Oh, there's a plate of tarts. Perfect. These are the queen's tarts. Hands off, you dessert thief. Wow. Sorry, I didn't know. All rise. Today, the Honorable Judge, the King of Hearts, will hear the case of the missing tarts. But the tarts are right there. So who stole the tarts? No one. They're right there. It was the knave. The knave of hearts stole the tarts. No, he didn't. Then why did you say he did? I didn't. Don't you remember your poem, Your Honor? <laughs> the evidence. The queen of hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The knave of hearts, he stole those tarts and took them clean away. The king of hearts called for the tarts and beat the knave full sore. The knave of hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. And so you see, this giant lady says the knave of hearts stole the tarts. Off with his head! No! Don't off with his head, it was just a made up poem. Silence in the court. That means you, Alice. But quiet, or it's off with your head. Hmm, her head is much too large to off. Hey, that's not my fault. Maybe she stole the tax. What, me? I'm trying to defend you. She did steal my cookie. Oh dear, this was getting way out of control. Alice didn't steal any tarts. Well, she was going to, but she didn't actually do it. And she never met a knave of hearts before, but she was pretty sure he didn't steal any either. Besides, weren't the tarts right there and not missing at all? Your Honor, we can all see that the tarts are right here, as in not stolen. So why don't we all just forget about this whole thing and move on? <laughs> Who wants to play croquet? Your Honor, White Rabbit, Caterpillar, Animals of the Jury. You all have seen me before. You know that for whatever reason, I keep changing size. It's not from eating. Well, I did eat that one cookie and then that other one. Those cookies were magical or something. I don't know. Will the Mad Hatter please take the stand? Oh, great. This guy again. The Hatter bowed before the Queen and then began the silliest nonsense Alice had ever seen or heard. There was a girl who stole some tarts, and Alice was her name -o. 
And Alice was her name. Oh, he's just making up this song. No fair. The real song is B I N G O. And then she tried to blame the name. Oh, Alice was her name. Oh, A O L I C E. I don't like this song. Off with his head. Order. Order in the court. The animal jury will decide who is guilty. Alice or the knave. The animals of the jury whispered, barked, meowed, squeaked, and riveted among themselves. Finally, they had their decision. We, the animals of the jury, think it was Alice who ate the tarts. The knave of hearts is as skinny as a card. Nobody ate the tarts. They're right there. Wait, I'm confused. I thought they were stolen. They were stolen, but now they're here. And none are missing? Nope. Well, why are we arguing about this? I wonder why anyone does anything here in Wonderland. It's all so silly. Oh, what did she say about Wonderland? Oh, poo to you. You're nothing but a card. Why don't you go fish? Oh, with her head! The queen sent her entire pack of cards on the attack. They all came flying at Alice as if someone had shuffled them and thrown them in the air, ninja style. <laughs> I'm back at home. Is this real? Ouch! And I think I'm my right size. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> but how did I get back? Was it a dream? No, it couldn't be. But what if I want to go back to Wonderland sometime? It was scary and confusing sometimes, but also kind of fun. <laughs> oh well, time to eat. I love a cookie. Or maybe a tart. Coming to story time. See you next time. Bye. Becoming really good friends with the beast. What's your real name? Actually, uh, it's Harry. <sighs> You've broken your cup again, Harry. You have to be dainty with teacups, like this. Thanks, Belle. <clears throat> what would I do without you? Belle, will you ma- <laughs> It's me, Miss Booksy. Today I wanted to go back to one of my all-time favorites, Beauty and the Beast. Do you remember? Because I don't remember too clearly. Was it a kiss from Belle or a tear that turned Harry the Beast into Harry the Prince? Let's find out again, okay? Here we go. Yes! I get to be Belle. So anyway, Belle. <laughs> I mean, I lived with my dad and two sisters. My dad sold cosmetics door to door. You know, makeup and lipstick, that sort of thing. One day, I was packing up a huge order. 25 bottles of shampoo, 100 bars of soap, 10 things of curl goop. Ugh, it was a lot. Who could have ordered all this stuff? A giant poodle? My dad had gotten a wicked bad flu, and I had to make the delivery. And I didn't even know his route, so I had to use a GPS to get there. Turn right at the very scary looking gate. Continue past creepy gargoyle statues. You have arrived at your destination, the beast's house. Huh? Hello? Who's there? <sighs> okay, Th that sounded like a monster or something. Time to go! <gasps> what do you want here? Oh, there, Chewbacca. Easy, easy. I I'm just delivering the hair care products that you ordered. Oh, fantastic! Uh, <clears throat> do you have the curl enhancer and the cocoa butter soap? I, I totally prefer cocoa butter. Great for sun damaged fur. Oh, hey, buddy, you're doing that wrong! Here, let me help. Oh, that's much better!
better. Uh, hey, actually, I, I'm looking for an assistant. Uh, you aren't looking for a job, are you? Well, my family did need the money, so I took the job. It actually wasn't so bad. The beast gave me a sweet room, like a room for a princess. I had a closet full of amazing dresses. Oh, and there was a state-of-the-art home theater. <laughs> oh, and a full-time pizza chef. That's right, kids, pizza 24-7. Ah, non-stop pizza. It was a pretty cool job. I did miss my dad a lot, but we Skyped like all the time. Hi, Dad! It's so good to see you! Yeah, I'm doing great! I love my room. Get out of here! <laughs> I was becoming really good friends with the Beast. What's your real name? Actually, uh, it's Harry. You've broken your cup again! Harry, you have to be dainty with teacups. Like this. Thanks, Belle. <clears throat> what would I do without you? Belle, will you ma- oh. Excuse me. So of course, that's when my sisters call. Dad is really sick, they tell me, and I need to leave right away. What was Harry gonna ask me? Boy, talk about a cliffhanger. The Beast was just about to ask me something pretty important, but I had to hurry home to take care of my dad. I made him chicken soup, I read to him, and told him jokes. And he was feeling better in no time. I told my sisters all about Harry, and they were super rude. They called him all sorts of mean names, like Furball, Ugly Harry Guy, Jabba the Mutt, You probably have lice. Deep down, I knew they were just jealous. I was having a really good time with Harry. He was nice to me. We had so much fun together. And did I mention the nonstop pizza party? Hello. <laughs> they said I was being selfish and that I should just stay home. I said, okay, fine, I'd stay. But just for a little longer. I wrote a message to Harry and asked my sisters to please give it to the postman. I wrote, dear Harry, Please forgive me, but I must stay for one more week. See you soon. Yours truly, Belle. Meanwhile... Dear Harry, get it? Cause you're so hairy. Please forgive me, but I must stay forever? See you soon? Just kidding, see you never? Not yours? Belle? P.S. You are Harry. When the beast, I mean Harry, cried, I felt his sadness from miles away. I didn't know exactly what, but I knew something was terribly wrong. Hey, I don't know what you did, but I know you did something terrible, and I'm gonna fix it. You, 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 you mean bad sisters. Oh, I'm not really good at coming up with insults, but that's because I'm nice. I found Harry nearly smothered in a mountain of dirty Kleenex, whimpering like a hurt puppy. Oh, I went to hug him and tell him that I was back and that everything was gonna be okay. But the sight of him so sad made me so sad. And one little tear fell. And you're gonna wanna go slow motion in this cause what happened next is amazing. My tear falls on Harry's face and he turns into a prince. Yep, a prince. And not a hairy prince, a really cute and handsome prince. <laughs> Seriously handsome. And that's when he told me about the curse. He had been a vain man and interested only in money and his looks. Then a witch cast a spell on him to teach him a lesson. She turned him into a beast. The spell could only be reversed when he fell in love. The catch was, she had to love me back. And she totally does. And I do. And that, kids, is true love. Total bonus that he turned into a prince. Oh, double bonus, because we got an ice cream bar for a wedding present. <laughs> yep, we had a fairy tale ending. Just eating pizza and having some ice cream. Chillin'. Me and not so Harry the prince. <laughs> See, I knew it was a tear. Is that what you guessed too? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the trickiest trickster in town. And therefore, my fellow compatriots, in our time of being, we... <gasps> that 
sneaky little punk. Tricky Jack is the worst little trickster in the whole dang town. <gasps> that can't be right. Everyone knows I'm the trickiest trickster in town. I'm gonna prove I'm the trickiest one there is. Jack can't beat me. I'm the tricky witch. Whoa, what's that? Hello, Jack. I have to warn you about something important. The Tricky Witch has heard about your pranks and wants to prove that she is the trickiest one in town. Impossible. I'm the trickiest trickster there is. You may be in major trouble. So, I'm always in trouble. You don't understand. The Tricky Witch will stop at nothing to prove that she is the trickiest one there is. The only way you can be safe from her is if you stop pulling pranks on people. Only then will she leave you alone. No way, angel food cake. Playing tricks is what I do. Hi, kids. Welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading the story of Jack-O-Lantern. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Tricky Jack was known as the biggest prankster in town. He was always causing trouble, like drawing on the walls, jumping in the public pool, taking candy from the candy store. Oh no, Jack just took my whole stock of chocolate lollies. And tying people's shoes together. Oh, that's so not cool. <laughs> I'm the trickiest trickster in town. He even once pants the mayor. And therefore, my fellow compatriots, in our time of being, we... Sneaky little punk. Tricky Jack is the worst little trickster in the whole dang town. One day, Jack's antics caught the attention of a sneaky witch. Excuse me, what was it you just said about the trickiest person in town? Jack is the sneakiest little fellow there is, always pranking us and making us unhappy. <gasps> that can't be right. Everyone knows I'm the trickiest trickster in town. It's because I'm a witch. That's what we do. It's in the job description. And on that fall day on October 31st, the witch made a decision that will change Jack's life forever. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. I'm going to prove I'm the trickiest one there is. Jack can't beat me. I'm the tricky witch. Later that day, Jack was walking on the trail back home when a mysterious figure approached him. Whoa. What's that? Hello, Jack. I have to warn you about something important. The Tricky Witch has heard about your pranks and wants to prove that she is the trickiest one in town. Impossible. I'm the trickiest trickster there is. You may be in major trouble. So, I'm always in trouble. You don't understand. The Tricky Witch will stop at nothing to prove that she is the trickiest one there is. The only way you can be safe from her is if you stop pulling pranks on people. Only then will she leave you alone. No way, angel food cake. Playing tricks is what I do. You need to stop playing tricks on people. Nobody likes it. And the witch will never leave you alone until you behave. Uh-oh, they better watch out. Let her. I bet I'll bother her more than she bothers me. The angel could see that persuading Jack to be better wasn't going to work. Well, if you won't listen to my advice and behave yourself, there is one way to stop the witch, but it won't work for too long. Go on. It's autumn, and the one thing that the witch hates more than anything is the fall harvest. She especially hates root vegetables like pumpkin, squash, potatoes, turnips. She hates potatoes? You mean she doesn't even like french fries? Not one bit. She doesn't even like sweet potato fries. My point is, if you aren't going to be good, you can at least try and stop her with that. But she'll be back. Whatever. I'll be fine. I don't care if she tries to one-up me forever. I'll always be the trickiest guy there is. Well, just in case, I will give you this to ward off the witch, should she come our way. If she touches it, she will be banished from our world and won't be able to come back until next year. Cool. I'll take it. Ew, what's this? It's a turnip. You know, a gourd, a root vegetable, grows in the ground, sometimes put it on salads. Have you ever eaten anything healthy, ever? The only food I eat is candy, french fries, chocolate, and candy. Wow, that's a lot of junk. I bet it hurts your belly. Do you always have a stomach ache? Yes. <laughs> that was hilarious. 
Anyway, use it to keep the witch away, but remember, she'll never truly leave you alone until you give up your prankster ways and become a good contributor to society. Save the spiel, Jack. Ow. And so Jack left the angel and started going home. Just kidding, he pranked her first. Oh, I should have seen that coming. But after pranking the angel, Jack headed home. And once again, as Jack got close to his house, he noticed something else on the path in front of him. Hey, you pile of scrap, out of my way. Please, young man, can you help me up? Hmm, let me think about it. Psych. You just made a big mistake, young Jack, for it is I, the Tricky Witch. <laughs> Which? Oh no. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Tricky Jack had just pranked the witch and she was not happy. You just made a big mistake, young Jack, for it is I, the Tricky Witch. <laughs> I've heard you think you're the trickiest lady in town. That I am, I'm the Tricky Witch. It's in my name. Oh yeah? Well, what kind of tricks do you do? Lots of tricks. I can turn butter into mud. I can make another me. And I can turn tree frogs into regular frogs. That's nothing. I bet you can't even make candy appear out of thin air. Oh, of course I can. Wow, that is so cool. Ooh! Hey, no fair. I didn't make that candy for you. Well, I'm the one that's eating it, so it's mine now. Hmm. You're trickier than I thought. Tell you what, let's do a challenge. At that moment, Jack remembered the angel's words. The witch will never leave you alone until you behave. But the chance to play tricks seemed too much fun and Jack knew what he was going to do. A challenge, you're on. You say you like candy? Well, let's go around from house to house looking for some and see who can get the most. Whoever has the most wins. Well, I'm sure I'll win this one. I'm good at taking candy, but how about we raise the stakes a little bit? Hmm. If I win, I get to keep all the candy you found. If you win, you get to keep all my candy. Sounds like a deal. Oh, too slow. Ooh, this is so exciting. So Jack and the Tricky Witch walked to the center of town and got ready for the challenge. Whoever could collect the most candy from around town would win. Okay, let's begin. On your mark, get set. Hey, I didn't say go yet, you cheater. But Jack was already collecting as much candy as he could find. He found caramel sweets in an old lady's purse, took lollipops from little children, <laughs> and even went directly to the source, the candy store. Oh no, Jack just took my whole stock of chocolate sandwich cookies. Jack felt good about his work, but oh no, the witch had a plan to trick Jack and win the bet. The witch was using her magic to make more candy. She really was a tricky witch. See, there's no way I didn't win this challenge. <laughs> How are they ever gonna get out of this one? A little while later, the challenge was over and Jack met the tricky witch to count up. It was pretty clear who'd won. Ha, it looks like I win. I'm the trickiest one of all. Wow, you sure are. I guess a bet's a bet. Here, take all my candy. Oh, that was almost too easy. Go on, Tricky Witch, count it up. Oh boy, I love rubbing salt in the wound. Yes, let's count up how much more candy I have now that I have yours too. One, two, three, four. Ah, a root vegetable. He had done it. Jack had tricked the witch. And now you're banished. All of this candy is mine. That is amazing. I may be banished for now, but you'll bet I'll be back. Nobody tricks me and gets away with it. In one year, I will return and get revenge. Yeah, whatever. 
Revenge! Revenge! Well, I'm glad that problem has gone away and will never bother me again. But just when Jack thought all his problems were solved, a familiar face appeared in front of him. The angel had returned. You! What do you want? I told you, Jack, the witch will be back and she will keep coming back again and again until she beats you. You cannot trick her forever. Yes, I can. Wanna bet? No, we just went over this. Ugh, never mind. Anyway, beware. When her banishment ends in one year, she will be smarter and trickier than ever before. Well, so will I. That is not something to be proud of, Jack. If you keep playing tricks, you will never be free of her. She will bother you forever and ever. And if she wins, you will be her prisoner. Where would she take me? To where she came from. The realm of darkness. A world of ghosts and darkness and evil witches. So I'll just have to keep tricking her forever. That's fine by me. I'll never give up my tricky ways. You say that now, but I'm warning you, a life of trickery and rule breaking is one you will regret. Oh yeah? Wanna bet? No. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. After Jack beat the witch's challenge, Jack was very pleased with himself. He had outsmarted an evil witch and she wouldn't be back for another year, which for Jack felt like a long, long time. But while the next year passed and Jack continued to pull pranks on everyone he met, the angel watched over him. Look at me, I've learned nothing. And so Jack kept pulling his pranks. Soon fall turned into winter. Woohoo! And winter turned into spring. <laughs> Uh, my allergies! Uh, does anybody have a tissue? I do! Did you put pepper on this tissue? Yes, yes I did! Wow, that is so mean! And spring turned into summer. Protect yourself from the sun, buy my sunscreen! Your sunscreen doesn't work! My whole family is burned! Ha <laughs> I'm hilarious. And winter turned back into fall. Surprise! This is unpleasant. Soon it was October 31st yet again, exactly one year since Jack had last seen the Tricky Witch. Jack woke up and knew that the witch was going to be coming for him. Oh boy, October 31st, the day the witch comes back. I bet I'll trick her again. Jack was a little nervous. What if the witch beat him? He was so anxious that he began walking around town looking for her. He looked everywhere. The fountain at the center of town. Young man, get out of there. That's where the ducks poo. I like it in here. That's so not cool. The local graveyard. Even the mayor's office. Eek, the pencing boy. Get out of here, Jack, you little trickster. As the morning turned into late afternoon, Jack decided to go home. As he strolled past the town's pumpkin patch, he found another figure curled up in the road. Please, young man, can you help me up? Aha, it's the witch. No way, Jose. I didn't even fall for this the first time. Oh, gosh darn it. Hello, Jack, it's me, the tricky witch. I'm back and for my revenge. Ah, watch out. You sure can try. You may have tricked me last time, but this time I'll make sure you don't have anything you can use to banish me. Empty your pockets. Hmm, perhaps we should do a classic challenge scenario. How about a race? A race? I love racing. I'm the fastest person in the world. Well, I'm a witch. I can move super fast. Hmm, this road isn't very long. How about instead of racing on foot, Let's have a climbing contest. That way, I can keep an eye on you so you don't cheat. And same to you, you cheated last time. So did you, and I still won. Enough, a climbing race it shall be. What should we climb? How about the old patch tree? Whoever gets the top first wins. Deal. Oh, no, too, too slow. slow. As Jack and the witch wandered over the big tree, the angel appeared in the sky for Jack to see. Jack, this is your last chance. You don't have to challenge her. The only way to truly win is to leave her alone. Jack thought it over, but deep down, he already knew what he was going to do. 
Jack was a trickster through and through, and there was no way he was backing down from the witch's challenge. Oh no, I hope he'll be okay. Don't worry, Angel Food Cake. I got this. At the base of the tree, Jack and the witch prepared themselves for the climb. Okay, I'll count down. On your mark, get set, go! And so the tricky witch started climbing as fast as she could. She climbed higher and higher and higher. So high that she couldn't even see Jack. She couldn't believe it. It looked like she was winning. But where was Jack? He was running away? What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Jack ran as fast as he could to the pumpkin patch nearby and started picking all the pumpkins he could. Big pumpkins, tiny pumpkins, anything he could. Then he raced back to the tree and started placing the pumpkins at the bottom. Soon there was a whole field of pumpkins at the bottom of the tree. It didn't take long for the witch to realize that Jack hadn't followed her in the race. Hey, what's going on down there? Looks like you've won again. The witch slowly climbed back down the tree, but stayed at the bottom branch as the truth hit her. There was no way for her to get down without hitting one of the pumpkins. Oh, now I get it. Oh, a root vegetable. No! What do you have to say for yourself, witch? Uh, darn it. There's no way for me to get down without being banished again. I have a new idea. What's that? You and I will make a deal. You will never bother me again for as long as I exist. You'll never take me to your home with darkness and ghosts and stuff. And what do I get in return? I'll move these pumpkins away so you can get down. The tricky witch considered Jack's words. Okay, deal. If you move the pumpkins, I will never be able to bother you and you'll never be allowed to enter the realm of darkness. Deal. You have no idea, do you? About what? Not every deal is as great as it seems. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Sure, whatever. Bye, witch. You'll never bother me again. And as promised, the witch never bothered Jack again. Jack lived the rest of his life pranking people, pulling tricks, and being a troublemaker. He did so until he was a very old man, living alone and friendless. And soon Jack's life was done. I'm ready to go to the next realm. I hope it's fun. But just then, the angel appeared in front of him. Hello, angel food cake. I'm ready for you to take me to my next life. I'm sorry, Jack, but I can't. What do you mean? You weren't a good person. You spent your whole life playing tricks on people. What? Your spirit will stay in this realm and for all of eternity, and you'll never be allowed to leave. Well, that's fine. I can still play pranks and stuff. Well, actually... Psych. You're a ghost, Jack. And in that moment, Jack realized the gravity of what he'd done. He had spent his whole life finding joy in hurting other people. And now, there were consequences. That's so sad. But, but I'll change. I'll be good. I'll do good deeds. It's too late. I gave you the chance to change your ways and do good deeds when you were young. But changing your mind just because you know there are consequences isn't enough. No one should be a good person because they have to be, but because they want to be. So well, what do I do now? I guess that's up to you. As the angel and the witch faded away, Jack was left to wonder about everything he did. Were all the tricks worth it? In exchange for a lifetime of fun, he now had to spend eternity trapped on Earth. This is what I get for not learning my lesson. And so Jack spent the rest of eternity wandering the streets watching. He's been known to prank other tricksters like he once was so that they may not make the same mistakes. Boo! Ah! <laughs> that was so funny. As time passed and Jack continued to haunt the town, his story was passed down from generation to generation. Everyone knew the story of Tricky Jack and how he was trapped on Earth forever. Afraid that he would haunt them, the townspeople treated October 31st as a special day to keep tricksters away. Families would put out candy so that children could enjoy sweets freely instead of taking them like Jack did. And they also put out pumpkins to keep the Tricky Witch away. The lit pumpkins were named jack-o'-lanterns in Jack's honor, like the lantern he held. This special day soon came to be known as Halloween, which we still celebrate today. The end. What a great story. 
Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Hey everyone, welcome to Sweets Cafe. He always has the best stories and he's an amazing chef. I can't wait to hear what he's gonna tell us about today. Welcome to Sweets Cafe. The tale of Jackie and the Jelly Bean Stalk. While Jackie was asleep, she heard a loud sound, like it came from the bottom of the earth. What was that? Jackie jumped out of bed and ran straight to the window, where she saw the most amazing thing, a giant beanstalk. Not just a regular beanstalk, a jelly beanstalk. Huh? Uh-oh. Hi, sweets. Hi, Rosie. It's Dreamy Beanie Soup Day. So many people, but nobody got their soup. You'll never believe what happened. I ran out of beans. It's been a while, but I guess we'll just have to wait. It'll be worth it. What happened to all the beans? All gone. I cooked soup all night. Giant barrels of soup. Well, what happened to all the soup you made? The giants ate it all. What giants? The giants that Jackie met in the sky after she climbed the giant magic jelly bean tree in her garden. I think you mean Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk. No, oh, it's Jackie, not Jack. And it was a jelly bean stock. Jelly beans are way better than regular old beans. Tell me the whole story. Are you ready? Let's go. Pound the table, clap your hands. Off we go to magic lands. Stir the batter, lick the spoon. Hold on tight, we'll be there soon. In Jackie's great family, everyone ate green healthy food. There's Jackie's mom. <laughs> There's Jackie's dad, there's Jackie's baby sister, and there's Jackie, who, um, who likes to eat treats. Oh dear, Jackie, what are you doing? How many times do I have to tell you? Whipped cream is not lunch. Jackie always wanted to eat only treats. Treats in the morning, treats for lunch, treats at dinner. She kind of looks like me. Yeah, that you mention it, she does look a little bit like you. Just before Dad went to the market to get bean soup for the whole family, Jackie surprised everyone and asked to go herself. Are you sure, Jackie? Absolutely sure. I think it's a great idea, Jackie. You really are a big girl already. Do you remember what to buy? I remember four bowls of the famous Dreamy Beanie Soup from Chef Sweets. Great. Here are our last five coins. It will be just enough for the soups. Thanks, Mom. Bye, everyone. See you soon. Hi, Rosie. What a lovely hot day. How about an ice cream cone? Or maybe an ice cream sundae? No candies for me today. Now I really have to go. And Jackie was happy and proud of herself. She also said no to Mr. Bonbon, bon, who showed her a wonderful fairy made of chocolate. No, Mr. Bonbon. Bon. And thank you, Mr. Bonbon. Bon. Mom sent me to buy only bean soup from Chef Sweets. Until eventually she met a mysterious man. Hello, little girl. <laughs> so, what would you like to buy? To buy? There's nothing here. Your stall's empty. Right you are! My stall has nothing! But I also have everything! All you need to do is dream and hope! Interesting. I want lots of colorful jelly beans, but not just a little bit. Lots and lots! Hmm, give me a minute. Let me see. I think I had... Oh! Ta-da! There you go. It costs exactly five coins. You can pay at the register. Thank you and goodbye. What? But there's only three tiny beans here. Doesn't matter. I'll sell the beans to the next customer. The magic beans. Magic? Sorry? Did you say magic beans? Well, uh, yes, the beans. They just make every wish you want come true. That can't be. So for you, it really won't happen. Why? For it to work, you need to dream and hope. But it costs five coins. And my mom asked me to buy bean soup. Ah, uh, well, that's not a problem. There are three beans here for three wishes. Soup to eat, something sweet, and there's one more wish left. Give it to your mom. She'll be amazed by the charm. Okay. 
After the meeting with the mystery man, Jackie finally got to my food truck. Would you like a pinch of sour cream with your dreamy beanie soup? How could I not? You, you can't. can't. Hi, Jackie. I've already packed bowls of soup for your whole family. Today, I don't need to buy bean soup. Because with the money mom gave me, I bought three magic beans. They make your dreams come true. Magic beans? Are you sure? Can I see them? I know they just look like normal beans. You just have to dare and dream, sweets. Now, bye, Chef Sweets. Good luck with the magic beans. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jackie. How was the market? It was great. I didn't buy any ice cream at Mr. Sorbet's stall. Oh, I have a really, really good girl. Soup. But Jackie, where's the soup? The soup? Uh, you're not gonna believe it, Mom. Soon, we'll have lots and lots of soup. And I'll have candy. And you'll still have one special wish. Anything you want. Here we go. What are you talking about, Jackie? What did you do? What wish? You didn't buy bean soup from the wonderful chef sweet stall? No, I bought three beans. Magic beans. They make your wishes come true. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Jackie, I asked for soup, but instead, what did you buy? But... Mom? Now get to bed. I don't want to hear another word from you. What a silly thing to do. So sad. <laughs> but hey, it's just the beginning. While Jackie was asleep, she heard a loud sound. Like it came from the bottom of the earth. What was that? Jackie jumped out of bed and ran straight to the window, where she saw the most amazing thing! A giant beanstalk! Not just a regular beanstalk, a jelly beanstalk! Oh, wow! Jackie was so happy! They really were magic beans! Not such a silly fool after all. Jackie picked more and more jelly beans. And then she kept on climbing and ate more and more yummy beans. She climbed and ate and climbed and ate some more until she was so high up that she went into a cloud. And when she came out of it, she saw a big door. Wow. I mean a huge door. Jackie wanted to know what was behind the door, but the handle was so high. I'll climb on the branch, take a big swing, and jump so high, I'll land on the handle. And that's exactly what Jackie did. She climbed, hung onto the branch, took a big swing, and jumped! Okay, okay, I'll get a gift. But not today. Only yesterday, you got a remote control car. I think I should leave. I don't want that anymore. My baby. A present, a present, I want a present. Give me a present, I want a present now. Little one, yeah. possible. Yeah. Giants discovered Jackie. Yes, they did. Did they do anything to her? Well, little one was a baby, and when he saw Jackie. Oh! Yay! Little one's happy! Little one's happy! Ouch! A talking dog! So, this is how little one played with Jackie. She tried to run away, but little one was so big. Jackie managed to sneak off and hide inside his shoe. Where'd you go? Little doll, where'd you go? Come back, how are you? I'll find you! I'll find you! Psst. Hi, Rosie. Sweet! I'm so happy to see you. How did you know I needed help? How did I know? The whole town is shaking! Lots of earthquakes! Then I remembered the mysterious beans, and I thought I'd come by and check your garden. I'm so glad you found me, but what are we gonna do? We have to escape quickly! Uh-oh. So, this is the plan. 
In order to run away, we need the giants... The giants? ...to go to sleep. And for the giants to go to sleep, they need... They need... ...to be full. And what do giants love eating the most? Um... Soup! Dreamy beanie soup! Really? I hope so. I have no idea. But this is what I made. So we'll need a bit of luck. We'll need a lot of soup. With a pinch of sour cream. Don't worry, I've been cooking all night. I cooked and I cooked, and now we just have to hope for the best. Hang tight. <laughs> Hello, giant family. I'm happy to inform you that your little one won an award. An award? Yes, he won the costume contest at school yesterday. He didn't tell you? No. You have such a talented boy, and so modest, too. He dressed up as a bean. It was amazing. As a bean? Little one, I'm so proud of you. Anyway, come help me bring in the prize. It's bean soup? Bean soup? Bean soup? So, did they like your dreamy beanie soup? I'm not sure liked is the right word. Oh, no. I would say they... Loved the soup! They ate and ate and ate and ate! <laughs> Yum! This is good. This is good. This is great! Green, healthy, and very yummy. And the sour cream mm. is fantastic. Bean soup! <laughs> Mom? Jackie! Are you okay? We were so worried about you. Yes, Mom, I'm fine. Thanks to Sweets. He rescued me from the giant's house. Giants! I'm deciding that today I want to taste real food. I want a bowl of dreamy beanie soup from Chef Sweets. <laughs> Chef Sweets, is there any more soup left? Not even a drop. But tomorrow morning, I'll reopen the stand, and I will save you four wonderful bowls of dreamy beanie soup. Would you like a pinch of sour cream? How could we not? We, we couldn't! What <laughs> <laughs> an amazing story! Ooh, ooh, guess what that means? The bean delivery is here! Soon we'll have dreamy beanie soup for everyone. Oh, I just love a happy ending. That was so much fun, right? Make sure you subscribe so you never miss a story. Bye. Time for story time games. Here we go. Let's play Spot the Difference. Can you spot all the differences in these scenes from the story? Here we go. Go! On the table, clap your hands. Off we go to magic lands. Stir the batter, lick the spoon. Hold on tight, we'll be there soon. In Jackie's great family, everyone ate green, healthy food. There's Jackie's mom. Hold on. Did you see something? Let's rewind. <laughs> what seems different to you? Look at this. This wasn't here before. All right, let's watch another scene. Here we go. Hey, okay, I'll get a gift. But not today. Only yesterday, you got a remote control car. I think I should leave. I don't want that anymore. My baby. Present, I mean, I want a present. Give me a present, I got a present now. Little one, yeah. Did you see something? Rewind. <laughs> what seems different to you? Look over here. This color is different. All right, let's watch another scene. Bean soup. Did you spot the difference? Let's watch that again. What seems different to you? Right over there. How did this get here? That 
that's the last one. Did you find all of them? Nice work. Come back to Cool School for more stories and games with me, Miss Booksy. Bye. They excitedly prepared for their super secret spy mission. Okay, do we have everything we need? Let's check. Binoculars? Check. Walkie talkies? Check. Night vision goggles? Check. Grappling hook? Check. Candy in case we get hungry. Ooh, good thinking. All right, let's go spy on the princess. Um, first of all, spy missions is that you don't yell that you're going on a spy mission. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading The Princess and the Pea. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Once upon a time, there was a prince named Henry, but everyone called him Hank. Prince Hank was going to be king one day, but first he had to get married. Why do I have to get married? And you have to marry a princess. No substitutes allowed. That was Prince Hank's mother, the queen. It was time for princess interviews. This was where princesses from near and far would come to the palace and meet the prince, hoping to become the next queen. Hey. Hi. You didn't curtsy. Next. Make sure you curtsy. Nope. Next. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Oh, hello, princess. And what kingdom do you hail from? Oh, I'm not a princess. I work here, remember? <laughs> Prince Hank did not remember. This was Miss Maggie, who had come to the palace to work for the queen. She had been there for ages, but Prince Hank was a little bit self-absorbed. That means he liked himself a lot and didn't care about or notice much else. You work here? What does that mean? Prince Hank was also not very familiar with work. He was a bit what we would call spoiled rotten. I'm a lady-in-waiting to the queen. Waiting? What are you waiting for? The bus? Lady-in-waiting means I wait on or serve the queen, kind of like an assistant. So you're not actually waiting for anything? No. And you're not here to try and marry me? Definitely not. The queen sent me to see if you needed anything. I suppose you could help me if any of these bootleg princesses try to get fresh. Very well. Next. Nope. Next. Wow, that is so mean. This went on for hours. To be or not to be, that is the question. I have the answer. Next. Oh, oh brother, no. As soon as a princess would enter the room, Prince Hank would send them away. Why don't you just talk to any of these princesses? You know, try to get to know them. They might be great. You're being, I hate to say it, a little bit rude, dude. Look, baggy. Maggie. Whatever. I can't waste my time with girls who aren't queen material. The next queen has to be the real deal. Genuine, bona fide, 100% R-O-Y-U-L-L. That spells royal. No, it doesn't. Um, I'm pretty sure it does. Anyway, these so-called princesses are totally bleh, and I'm bored, so I'm gonna go take a nap. Wait, I, I think there's one more girl. Ugh, fine. Next. Oh, hello. That princess is so beautiful. You look familiar. You remind me of someone I like. Prince Hank liked this princess immediately and invited her to stay at the castle. He was smitten, but soon it was clear they actually had a lot in common. I can't wait to see what happens next. She was very picky. Ew, next. She was very into herself. And she was not very polite. <laughs> Somebody smells like cheese. Not me. I smell good. <laughs> After dinner, everyone went down to the parlor for the evening's entertainment. In an effort to impress the princess, Prince Hank sang a song. I live in a castle. I wear a crown. It's so shiny. It's so awesome. Your turn, princess. Play us a song. Yeah, true love is great and love is not that I met my prince. La, 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 la. Wait, no, you need to go higher. Now it's like this. That was hilarious. Okay, I'm bored now. Where's my bed? That's when the queen leaned over to Maggie and whispered, This is how we'll tell if she's a real princess. The plan was to place one tiny green pea under the mattress in the guest bedroom. 
You see, supposedly a real princess would be so sensitive, she would feel the teeny tiny lump and not be able to sleep a wink. Maggie thought it was a little silly, but she followed the queen's orders. <laughs> okay, your bed's ready, princess. Finally, I'm exhausted. Well, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Ew, gross. Oh, sorry, it's just an expression. <laughs> Good night. What do you think will happen next? Chapter two, here we go. The next morning, Maggie and the queen eagerly waited for the princess to join them for breakfast. Did their test work? Had she felt the pee? Finally, the princess came down. Good morning, princess. But before they could ask how she slept, the princess said, Oh my gosh, there was a giant lump in the middle of my mattress. I couldn't sleep at all. Oh really? Well, we'll have that taken care of at once. Maggie! On it, ma'am. Ooh, this is so exciting. So Maggie lugged a new mattress all the way up the stairs and plopped it on the bed. Ah, Surely she won't feel the pee under two mattresses. But the next morning played out the same. Ugh, I couldn't sleep a wink. I could still feel this gigantic pokey lump. So Maggie pulled another mattress up the stairs and put it on the bed. Ugh, okay, maybe she could feel the pee with two mattresses, but good luck feeling it with three. <laughs> but you guessed it, the princess once again came down to breakfast, rubbing her eyes and yawning. Once again, Maggie was struggling to get yet another mattress up to the guest room and on top of a now very high bed. And this happened again and again and again and again. Wow, it's so colorful. Finally, Maggie asked the queen, Your Highness, isn't it obvious that the princess is a real princess? She felt the pee every single night, no matter how many mattresses I put on her bed. This is a very serious thing, Maggie. Do you know how many fake princesses there are out there? No. It's a real problem. Whatever you say, your highness. Oh, here she comes. Let me guess, you didn't sleep a wink? Oh, how many does it take? A million? A million mattresses? I'll be dragging around mattresses until I'm an old lady. Hey, Maggie. Prince James. Prince James was Hank's twin brother. He was born four minutes after Hank, and being the younger twin, he would never be king, but he didn't mind. He was totally cool with just being a regular guy. Well, he was still a prince, but he was very laid back. Pretty much the opposite of Hank. That prince is so handsome. Maggie and James had known each other for quite some time and liked each other a lot. They liked to do not so royal things together, like fill up the palace pool with slime, eat ice cream sundaes till their tummies hurt, and sneak into the kitchen to mess with the royal chef's menu. Goose liver pate? No thanks. Let's just change it to pizza. Extra cheese. Ooh, add pineapple. Yep, they were partners in crime. Oh, uh, what you up to? The princess pea chest. The what? Prince Hank can only marry a true royal, and the queen wanted me to make sure that this girl's a real princess, so I put a pea under her mattress. Oh, yeah, I still don't get it. Well, apparently princesses have a super high sensitivity and can feel something as small as a tiny pea under their mattress. And sure enough, this princess has felt it every single night for like two whole weeks. So I just keep stacking mattresses, but she keeps complaining about the pea. Maybe she just likes to complain? That's a possibility. Hey, I have an idea. Let's take the pea out and see if she still says her mattress is lumpy. Ugh, scandalous. Let's do it. Wow, this is so fun. You almost got it. Just a little more. Okay, I see it. Get it, get it! Wow, I can't believe you lugged all those mattresses up there. I'm pretty strong. So, what now? We wait and see how the princess sleeps. It seemed like forever until the princess's bedtime. I win! No way! I always win! Mother always lets me win! You're playing the game wrong. Well, my mother always lets me win, so you're playing it wrong. Wanna play again? No, I'm gonna go to bed. Gee, I really hope I can sleep tonight. That bed is so lumpy. Anyway, good night, everybody! Good night, my love. Here comes the moment of truth. The next morning, Prince James and Maggie waited for the princess, eagerly awaiting her report. 
here she comes. But instead of appearing well rested, the princess looked like she hadn't slept at all. The pee was gone, but the princess said, OMG, I literally tossed and turned all night long. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Really? Yeah, it's like there's this lump right in the middle of the bed. I'm very sensitive to these things, you know, being a princess and all. Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter three, here we go. Maggie and James were totally confused. I don't get it. We removed the pee, but she says she still felt the lump. She must be making it up, but why would she randomly lie about something like that? I got it. She knows about the princess and the pee test. So she's faking it to seem like a real princess. Yeah, at least I think so. So if she's not a princess, who is she? I don't know, but we have to find out. How can we do that? We spy. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh this is so exciting. James and Maggie both loved a good caper. They excitedly prepared for their super secret spy mission. Okay, do we have everything we need? Let's check. Binoculars? Check. Walkie talkies? Check. Night vision goggles? Check. Grappling hook? Check. Candy in case we get hungry. Ooh, good thinking. All right, let's go spy on the princess. Um, first rule of spy missions is that you don't yell that you're going on a spy mission. <laughs> right, got it. Let's go. wait for her to reveal her true self. What do you think is gonna happen next? But the princess wasn't up to anything unusual. She did her nails, she read a magazine, she brushed her hair, she washed her face, you know, totally normal stuff. Wait, what? Uh -huh. What? No, that can't be. Ah, she's coming this way. So she's a witch. Major plot twist, but why the princess act? We have to get to the bottom of this. Maggie and James didn't have flying broomsticks, so they couldn't follow the princess, a uh, witch, wherever she was going. So they just had to wait, and wait, and wait, and wait. The witch finally came back just before dawn. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. James and Maggie watched as she emptied out a small bag. What's all that stuff? Wait, shh, listen. Okay, the recipe calls for the eye of a rattlesnake, the whiskers of a catfish, three mouse tails, one ounce of kangaroo sweat. Ew. She's casting a spell. And a lock of stallion hair. Now just stir and voila, the magic potion is ready to serve. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. So that's why Hank likes her so much. She's been feeding him love potions. Not on my watch. Let's go stop her. James and Maggie ran to breakfast to thwart whatever wicked plan the witch had cooked up. Okay, so what's our plan? Okay, when she gets down here... Good morning, princess, my love. Ah, she's here! What do we do? Wash her face! Hey, what the heck are you doing? James, stop washing my girlfriend. She's a witch. She's got green under there, and she has a pointy hat, and she flies around on a broomstick, and she cooked up a love potion to make you love her. She's not a real princess at all. She totally pretended to feel the pee under her mattress, but it was all a ruse. She's a witch, I tell ya. The witch? Oh, no. Are you done? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, good. Apologize to the princess at once. Didn't you hear what I just said? Your girlfriend's a witch! It's no use, guys. He can't hear anything bad about me. He's in love. Can't you see? The spell is too powerful! That's right. And now you'll love me, too! <coughs> oh, no! The potion! Now we're going to... We're going to... To... I forget what I was gonna say. Oh, really? Oh, hi, princess. You look so... So beautiful this morning. Ah, why thank you, James. James, James, you're under her spell, can't you see? You're a pretty princess. Ah, what do I do now? How are they ever gonna get out of this one? 
Chapter four, here we go. This is terrible. Both princes are under the spell of the witch. Wait, why am I not under the spell? I breathed in the love potion too. Relax, it only works on princes. It's a very specific spell. Oh, but why? What are you trying to do? Well, I was trying to marry Prince Hank, but now I guess I have my choice, don't I? Maybe I'll marry Prince James. No! No? Ah, uh, does someone have a crush? Prince James and... What's your name again? Maggie. Maggie, sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Shush! First comes love, then comes marriage. Oh, wait, not if I marry him. I can't hear you, la 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 la. Wow, that is so mean. Okay, I have to figure out how to defeat the witch and break the spell. All right, how do you destroy witches? Water, yeah, I'll just dump a bucket of water on her like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. That won't work, and if you mess up my makeup, I will conjure up a curse, so bad. A curse? Oh no. Okay, fine. Uh, think, Maggie. Oh, Dorothy also crushed a witch with her house. That's your plan? You're gonna smush me with a house? Yeah, I guess not. Ooh, Hansel and Gretel pushed their witch into an oven. No, thanks. Face it, Maggie. Maggie. Whatever. Face it, Maggie. I'm going to marry the prince, and you can't stop me. Why do you even want to marry the prince anyway? Aren't we just supposed to marry, like, wizards or ogres or something? Seriously? What? You don't think witches grow up reading fairy tales too? They do? Yes! And all my life, deep down, I've known that I'm really supposed to be a princess. So when I heard there was a real prince looking for a princess, well, I put on my dress and I hightailed it over here. Ooh, that makes sense. Don't you think it's a little messed up that you used the love potion on Hank? I wanted him to like me. Honestly, I think you guys have a lot in common. I think he'd like you anyways. Really? You think so? Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? I think James likes you too, by the way. Really? I mean, yeah, I guess he's pretty cool. I was only kidding when I said that I might marry him. It doesn't matter. I'm not a princess. I don't know if you noticed, but I wear the same dress literally every single day. Well, except today. These are my spy clothes. Wait, I just got a great idea. Let's do a princess makeover! Fun! Aw, oh, that's so sweet. Their princess makeover party was so much fun. The girls barely noticed that they were totally bonding. Could they really become friends? They sure looked like besties. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you do know this doesn't technically make me a princess, right? Who cares? If you feel like a princess, you're a princess. End of story. Now let's go get Hank and James and go have some fun. <laughs> princess, my love. No, she's my love. Um, I think you have to break the spell first. Oh, right. Do you have any lizard's tails or grasshopper belly buttons? Uh, not on me. Well, that was weird. <laughs> I'll just try a chant. All right, let's see, this should work. Loveth, spell, brachioso. What happened? I feel weird. Hey, Maggie, cool dress. <laughs> this whole thing. <laughs> hey, I got an idea. Let's go play mini golf and get some ice cream. Great idea. OMG, I love it. So the four went out on a double date and had a blast. The princess witch was nervous to reveal her true identity to Prince Hank, but he thought it was pretty cool. Ice creamiosa magicus flyeth into my mouth. -es. That is amazing. This is seriously so much cooler than being royalty. It took a little convincing for the queen to come around, but she realized that having a royal family member with magical powers could come quite in handy. But most importantly, she saw how happy the princess witch and Hank were. The queen did have one question though. So did you really feel the pee under all those mattresses? No, I read about that in a fairy tale once, so I thought it was worth a shot. The queen also approved the match between James and Maggie. They were obviously perfect for each other. Yay! So the story ends with the happiest of fairy tale endings. Not just one true love, but two. And a couple of girls who grew up loving fairy tales became real princesses. 
pretty cool. Oh, happily ever after. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye.